Warning, these videos are designed for HVAC professionals only. Please, please do not attempt this on your own stuff. Welcome to TEC2. I'm Dave Herman with Tech Support, and today we're gonna to be going over setting the gas pressure on a modulating furnace. When setting the gas pressure on this, you're not gonna be setting uh, first stage and second stage. You're gonna be setting a maximum and minimum. So we're gonna be looking at the staging a whole different way. We're gonna be looking at it as modulating. So totally different than we're used to. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the valve itself set up to be able to read uh, gas pressure with our manometer. This is the newer style valve. So we're gonna take our 330 seconds Allen wrench. We're gonna go to our outlet tap on top of the valve. We're gonna rotate that a full turn. Just gonna open it. We don't need to take that screw out just one full turn. We're gonna slide our adapter tube over it, and then we're gonna attach our manometer directly to that. Okay, so we're ready to go as far as our manometer goes, and our gas valve as far as checking the actual pressure itself. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta get into the furnace itself, our control board, and we wanna set our pressures, you know, setting our maximum pressure first and then setting our minimum pressure. They have to be set in that order. Set our maximum first, minimum second. The area between minimum and maximum, it'll find its own range during operations as long as that maximum is set correctly and the minimum is set correctly. The pressures on that are gonna be a little bit different than we're also used to as far as setting, say, a two-stage valve. Generally, our maximum pressure is gonna be set at 3.5. The actual range on that is 3.2 to 3.8, which is similar to what we're used to on a standard single stage furnace or on a high stage. So that the actual pressure itself is gonna be about the same. The minimum is where we're very different than anything we're used to. The normal setting on that is gonna be 0.5, and our actual range on that is gonna be 0.5 to 0.65 gas pressure. So very different than what we're used to, extremely low compared to what we're used to on lower stages at 1.5. So our minimum is gonna be set at 0.5. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the furnace. We're gonna take off our bottom door. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bypass our infinity control. In the lab here, we have this set up. We have our infinity control right at the furnace just for convenience in our setup here. When you're in a residence or a building, that's not gonna generally be right by the furnace like this. But either way, we're gonna eliminate that from the equation altogether. We're gonna remove our four uh, wire tab plug from the board. So we're gonna eliminate the control from uh, the circuit. Now we're gonna go down into the control part of the furnace. We've removed our plug for our user interface and we're gonna look at our, our thermostat terminal strip and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our unit jumped out to our maximum fire. So we're gonna jump out our maximum by going to our R, our W1, and then from W1, we're gonna to go to our W2, which will ensure that we go to our maximum firing rate. We're gonna make sure our manometer is turned on. Make sure it's zeroed out. And we'll give the furnace a minute to get fired up and make sure we are firing at full gas pressure and see where our pressure is set at right now. Our furnace is up and running now. We're in maximum fire. The furnace is gonna initially start in a mid range and then it's gonna go to the range it needs to as far as its set point. So the user interface is generally gonna decide that depending on how it's hooked up and set up and the algorithm within the system. Right now we have that bypassed by using the jumpers at the board just to make sure it is in our maximum fire. 
So we're in maximum fire on this unit. Right now, our gas pressure is showing 3.4, 3.42 to be exact, which is essentially 3.4. So as far as adjusting that gas pressure, this is where we're gonna be totally different than we're used to on our other valves. We have set screws that we turn and adjust on the standard valve, which reacts immediately. This is an electronically controlled valve, so you don't have that immediate reaction. We have one set point for all our different ranges of operation. You don't have two set points or three set points, whatever it may be. We have two simple set points on a two-stage furnace. On a modulating, we have one. Single stage, we have one. So a little bit different there as far as valves. So a single stage furnace, we have one set point, uh, set point with a set screw. Two stage, we have two set points, two set screws. Modulating, there's one screw, one set point. We don't have different multiple because we have electronically controlled valves. So we're gonna use one point to make all our settings between our maximum and minimum. So what we're gonna do, that's located right towards the right side of our valve. There's a white cap over that. So we're gonna pop that cap out. Set that off to the side. We're gonna need a small uh, screwdriver for that thermostat type screwdriver. You're gonna get that in there and you're gonna get it on the screw itself. Right on the valve itself, it's gonna have your your pulse minus for your additional pressure or to take away pressure. So once again, we're within range as far as this 3.4 goes. Our range on this unit is 3.2 to 3.8. So we're within range. So we don't need to make an adjustment, for, but just for the sake of going over it, we're gonna adjust it. We're gonna increase this pressure on this unit. Now when adjusting this, you, are gonna turn that screw, but it's a little bit different, again, than we're used to on the standard furnace. You're not just gonna turn this and just watch that pressure go up and down. There's a clicking that you're gonna hear as you turn that screw. One click per second. You don't wanna turn it too quick because the board needs to follow what's going on. So one click per second. It's always best to do a number of clicks, say five, six clicks and then kind of wait and see where your manometer is adjusting and going to. You may have to do more, may have to do less. It may not uh, react to what you're doing right away. So you kind of kind of play it by ear with each one, each valve and see how it reacts to how you're setting. So we'll get in here on our set screw. We're gonna get in and remember, you're gonna feel the click and you're also gonna hear it if you're close enough to the furnace. So one click per second, three, four, five. So I just did five clicks, one per second. We were at about 3.4 on our gas pressure. This valve's immediately registering it. It's not taking any time to do it. And right now we're at 3.5, 3.57 to be exact. So this valve, as I turned each click, it was immediately changing pressure. Sometimes you might change it, hit four or five clicks, two or three. You may do even more than that, and it doesn't react immediately. So you just gotta kind of be patient with these valves and just see how many clicks it takes to get them to adjust. You know, most of the time they're gonna react relatively quickly. So with just five clicks, we jumped up in gas pressure from 3.4 to 3.5, 3.57, you know, so a fair amount relatively quickly. So now we're gonna back it down a bit. One, two, three, four, five. That was five clicks. And that's bringing the pressure down right back to 3.4, 3.47. So right about the same range we were at. So the five clicks is, is taking us, a, you know, right about the same range either way. So that's your adjustment for that. So remember, you don't wanna do that fast, one click per second. If you do it faster than that, 
the board may not keep up with you, you can actually damage the board in there, so you wanna make sure you do it one click per second. So that's gonna be one click per second on our maximum fire, and it's gonna be the same when we go to do our minimum. So we're gonna leave that at this for our maximum. We're good there, so we know that's good. So our next step is gonna to be to go to our minimum fire. Now that our maximum fire is all set, we're gonna to go to our setting for our minimum fire. That we're gonna to have to go back into our control uh, compartment again. So we're gonna remove the jumpers we have to get the unit to run in our maximum fire. And then what we're gonna do now is we wanna make sure this unit stays in minimum fire. We don't want the board to decide to actually through an algorithm to go into any other uh, range of fire because we wanna make sure our setting is correct. It's critical that the setting is correct on here because it's dependent as far as our gas pressure goes. The system operation is dependent on the gas pressure being in line so the blower is operating at the right speed along with our gas pressure so we avoid having any kind of limit issues. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is go to get to our minimum fire, we're gonna have to make some adjustments on our setup switches. So our setup switches on SW1 number two, we're gonna want that switch on. And then on SW4 uh, number two, we're gonna want that off. So I'm gonna make my adjustments And then I'm gonna take my jumper and I'm gonna go from R to W1 and that will keep us in our minimum fire position. Our manometer is still hooked up. We'll make sure that's at zero. And then we'll wait for our unit to start up. And then we'll check our pressure from there. When the unit initially starts up, it's not gonna start in that minimum range. It's gonna start in a, a mid range. Make sure we have good operation, we have flame sense, and then it'll ramp all the way down, usually within about a minute or so, and it'll ramp down into the minimum range of operation. And once again, once we get there, our gas pressure on that is gonna be 0.5, and our range is very small on that, it's 0.5 to 0.65. Again, we're gonna be adjusting through that one adjustment screw, and that doesn't change. One click per second when we make that adjustment on that. So right now, it's through our manometer, looking at it, it's like I said, fired up somewhere around mid-range. Right now, we're showing about 1.5, 1.54. But you're generally gonna hear the difference once that uh, scales back that pressure going to minimum fire you're going to hear the difference in the burners and like I said usually that's within about a minute or so we'll give it a second to make sure it doesn't change anymore generally when you're right by the furnace you're able to hear hear the difference as that pressure is dropping as the inducer is slowing down so checking the manometer at this point, we're at 0.58, which puts us right in range where we need to be on this. Once again, it's 0.5 to 0.65, which is very low compared to what we're normally used to dealing with furnaces. So we're right in within range uh, where we should be. So 0.59, approaching 0.6 with a maximum of 0.65. So just for the sake of demonstration purposes we'll take a look at this we'll get on our set screw 
and we'll get this adjusted back and turned down slightly. So on the screw, one, one click per second. So those five clicks actually took us a little bit lower than where we want to be. So right now we're at 0 0.43, 0 0.42. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to get us back up a little bit higher right at our 0.5 range. So once we get on that adjustment screw, or clicks to increase, one, two, three, four, we're at 0.49 right now, Go one more click, so that puts us at 0.52, and that leaves us in good operating range. So we've set our maximum and we've set our minimum, so now we have a good range we're at our 3.5 range for our maximum, 0.5 on our minimum, and now the unit itself will run its range as it needs to between those two set points. We Once again, we want to make sure that's accurate, so the blower and the gas valve, the gas part of the furnace, are in unison when they're operating, so we avoid having any kind of limit issues. If that minimum pressure is set too high, you're likely to have limit issues immediately because our blower isn't going to be running at the right speed to keep up with what our gas pressure is. So it's important that we get that gas pressure set correctly on these units. So once again, we set our maximum pressure first, our minimum pressure second. We want to make sure our maximum is at 3.5, our minimum is at 0.5, and from there we should be set and good for operation. So now our gas pressure is all set correctly. You know, we're good to go, we're good for operation. So we could get in, we could remove, move our jumper. Now we're gonna go back in and we're gonna put our setup switches back to what they originally were. Our SW1 number two is gonna go to off and our SW4 number two is gonna go to on. Okay, so our adjustments are made. I'm gonna turn off the power to the unit. I'm gonna take our four pin connector for our user interface, our communicating plug. I'm gonna plug that back into the board. So now our user interface will be put back into circuit. I'm gonna power back up. That's gonna take a while to get back online. I'm gonna pull our manometer. I'm gonna close up our checking port. I'm gonna make sure that the set screw in there is snug with our Allen key. And we'll be all set. The unit is back up and ready for operation. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Dave Herman with TEC Tube. Hopefully this cleared up any questions you might have about setting up the gas pressure on the modulating furnaces.